Now we have introduced uh, some basic concepts related to uh, consolidation in case. Next, we're going to focus on consolidation calculation. Uh, basically, we're going to try to answer the following two questions. First question deals with the magnitude. So basically, how much settlement do you expect from primary consolidation? Uh, so that's the magnitude. And the second question is, uh, how fast will settlement due to primary consolidation occur, which deals with the time rate of consolidation? And we're going to start with the first question, the magnitude of settlement. Uh, the primary equation we're going to use to calculate this consolidation settlement, which we call SC, uh, is shown actually on this slide at the bottom here. So in this expression, H is the height of the consolidating layer, basically the height of the clay layer, and E0 here, that's the initial void ratio of the consolidating layer. And this initial void ratio is typically measured or uh, uh, tested using a representative sample uh, taken, say, at the middle of the clay layer. And then the final term, the highlighted term here, delta E, is the change in void ratio, which can be related to the change in effective stress sigma prime through some moduli that we obtain from 1D consolidation test. Specifically, we need C sub C, which is the compression index, and C sub S, which is the swell index or recompression index. And to get this e uh, expression, we actually uh, we make use of the definition of vertical strain in 1D consolidation, epsilon V, which is the ratio of changing height, uh, that's a consolidation settlement, SC over the initial height. So that's basically a definition of strain. And this can be related to the void ratio change. If you look at this phase diagram on the right-hand side, so this is the solid phase, and this is the void phase, uh, which is filled with water if uh, clay is saturated. So this epsilon v can also be expressed as the change in void ratio, delta e, over total volume, which is 1 plus e naught. And then you solve for SC, and uh, you end up with this expression here. So the key in this primary consolidation calculation is to find the void ratio change delta E due to effective stress change delta sigma prime. To illustrate how do we get uh, the change in void ratio delta E due to the change in effective stress delta sigma, I'm going to use this idealized curve uh, from 1D consolidation test result. And if you look at this curve, uh, this curve has actually two straight lines. Uh, the first straight line has a shallower slope. Uh, this is what we call recompression part of the curve. And this is uh, what clay is going to follow if you unload and reload it. And C sub S, that's a slope of this uh, straight line, is called a swell index or it's also called a uh, recompression index. And the second straight line has a steeper slope. So this is the virgin compression part of the curve. So virgin compression curve. That has a slope we call C sub C, so compression index. And the turning point here, that's your pre-consolidation pressure sigma C prime. So depending on the relationship between your initial effective stress in the clay, we call sigma naught prime, the pre-consolidation pressure sigma C prime, and the final effective stress in the clay, sigma F prime, there are different cases of consolidation calculation. And we're going to go over that in details in the next few slides. So for the first case, uh, this is where the initial effective stress in the clay, sigma naught prime, is equal to the pre-consolidation pressure sigma C prime. So the clay is a normally consolidated clay. And if clay is normally consolidated, it's going to follow this steeper slope, this virgin compression uh, curve uh, that has a slope of C sub C. And then the void ratio change delta E 
is related to the effective stress uh, delta sigma, effective stress change delta sigma through the slope CC here. So if you look at this equation on the, uh, on the right, this highlighted part is actually the effective or the void ratio change delta E. So the second case of uh, consolidation calculation is where the initial effective stress sigma naught is smaller than the pre-consolidation pressure sigma C prime and smaller than the final effective stress sigma F prime. So for this case, if you look at this curve, uh, clay is going to follow the recompression curve that has a slope of C sub S initially. And once the effective stress passes the pre-consolidation pressure sigma C prime, clay is going to follow this virgin compression part of the curve that has a slope of C sub C until it reaches the final effective stress sigma F prime. So the void ratio change due to this effective stress change has two components. The first one is the uh, recompression part. So that's the first highlighted part in this equation. That's delta ER. And the second part is the void ratio change corresponding to the, uh, the virgin compression part of the curve. So that's epsilon or delta EC. So the total effective or total void ratio change delta E is the sum of these two, delta ER plus delta EC. And the equation for consolidation calculation as C is listed here. And the third case uh, is where the initial effective stress epsilon naught prime is smaller than sigma f prime and is smaller than the pre-consolidation pressure sigma c prime. If you look at this curve here, uh, for case three, clay stays on this recompression part of the curve and the slope is c sub s. So the expression for this pre primary consolidation calculation as c makes use of the swell index or recompression index C sub S. And again, this highlighted part is the void ratio change delta E here. And actually there is uh, another special case. Uh, it's where the final effective stress sigma F prime is smaller than the initial effective stress sigma naught prime. So this is a case um, when, say, you unload the clay layer. So the effective stress actually reduces because of unloading. And for this special case here, clay, again, is going to follow this shallower slope uh, with uh, this modulus C sub uh, S. But the equation you use to calculate this uh, sediment, uh, in this case, is actually heave or rebound is actually the same as case three. So you can use the same expression, but you're going to get negative um, SC value for unload because clay is going to rebound or heave due to this unloading process.